Everybody and welcome to Hit the Books, the only weekly realistic fantasy booking podcast in the universe, in the WWE universe specifically. Thank you everybody for listening to this week's episode. We're so glad you're, you're coming in. The fire's warm. Come on in, get out of that winter cold, uh, and come on in and roast your little your little booties off. Uh, my name is Ryan Knightsey. I am one half of the hosting department here on Hit the Books. Uh, and with me every single week is my other half of the department. Uh, he is the spicy nugget himself, the head writer of SmackDown Live, Mikey Manfredi. Mikey, how are you doing, friend? I'm doing great. I'm ready to book another episode of SmackDown. We are on the road to the road to WrestleMania. <laughs> yes. And I'm very excited. We're almost at the Royal Rumble, which is the, the which is one of the big ones, baby. Yes, we are halfway done. Excited. Halfway done to the Royal Rumble which is a, a wild thing to try to book. But then he also got WrestleMania around the corner. And WrestleMania, you know, WrestleMania, which will, in in our universe, I guess, taking place in Tampa as well again. I don't know, because we, we ignored COVID, so technically it's L.A., but according to the actual it's real life... Los Angeles, California. Uh, according to actual real life, may also still be at Tampa. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting one. Uh, it's going to be, what, our fourth it, will this be our fourth wrestlemania i think it might be actually um i think so right because we're on uh yeah i think it's fourth third or fourth definitely it's let's see this i think this will be our third wrestlemania together which is crazy to me that we have i can't believe we've booked three wrestlemania where we've booked two wrestlemanias and we're going on to a third oh my god yeah uh, wild stuff here over on the Hit the Books channel. But how are you doing, Mikey? Uh, how are you doing? How are how are things going so far in the new year? Oh, things are going fine. We're only a <laughs> we're only a couple of days in, and nothing has burned to the ground yet. So I guess we'll see. That's you know that's that's good things I guess so far. Uh, you know things are going well over here over in, over in the ATL. Um, by by time everyone at home is late hearing this, it is long past the uh, uh, Senate Georgia Senate runoff elections, uh, <laughs> and I'm still in the world where like I have no idea what's about to happen. Um, by the time people listen to this, what episode is this? Are we doing this? Is this episode eleven? I think it is. Yes. Episode eleven. Uh, yeah, episode eleven. So yeah, by the time people are hearing this. It's it's we're listening to this in a pre Wrestle Kingdom world, so whether or not Wrestle Kingdom actually happens because of uh Japanese COVID shutdowns uh is up in the air still at the time of recording. Uh the Georgia Senate runoffs everything in the everything in the beginning able to talk about uh of January has not yet existed in our timeline. <laughs> and hopefully never will. Yes, well, we hope that well, we hope that Wrestle Kingdom starts, but we just hope the COVID I mean, shutdown yeah. doesn't. Or maybe we do want it to shut down because it's safer then for people. What is what is what is, as a wrestling fan? How should I feel? Um, I don't know. It's the, one of those sort of things. Um, but yes, we are on the way to Royal Rumble, Mikey. Uh, things are things are happening. It's still early in the new year for us. Later in the, I guess, later in the month for everybody else. But you know, I, I think I think things are going fine. You know, last last couple of weeks of December were real some real kicks in the guts, uh, multiple of them. And you know, I think we're gonna round it out. I think I was talking about this with my girlfriend Jesse the other day, where it's just sort of like it feels like every every couple of years when people are like, "Yeah, this year stinks. Can't wait for the next one. Can't wait for the next one." It, it was always sort of like that joke of like, "Oh yeah, this stinks." I feel like people like January like. Yeah, 2020 was bad. Like no no joking aside, like it's just like it was bad. So I feel like the turnaround of 2021 hopefully will be better. I I feel like 2021 has the potential for people to recognize what it actually felt like to have live a bad year and then maybe a lot of the social consciousness be like yeah, let's we got to try to make things better. <laughs> we got to start doing things. I I don't know, what do you think? I don't know. I mean, like I hope I hope that this kind of opens everyone's eyes and 
shows the world that, hey, this is what a sucky year looks like. And it all actually could have been prevented if we weren't idiots. Yeah. But turns <laughs> out, we turns out, most of us are. So we got stuck with this for an entire year. When it could have been maybe a month-ish if we just fucking <laughs> did the thing. Remember, like, early on when everyone was like, two weeks, a month, tops. <laughs> everyone was like, two weeks off of work? Too good to be true. It's and a vacation. It's Let's drink. Year. Let's party. Or not party, but socially distant parties. Ugh. And now we're like, now we're like nine, ten months in. We're just sort of like, man, this sort of blows, right, Everyone's guys? Everyone's like, look at all the video games I could play. All right. I, yeah. Uh, I, is, is there any, like, I was talking, I was also saying this to Jesse, where it's just sort of, like, I feel like I've discovered like a new, like a, a level of, it's not like necessarily laziness, but like lack of drive because of this. Because now it's just like, I'm, since I, there's no commuting. There's no like anything else. I'm just sort of staying at home, not going anywhere, doing anything. It's just like, man, I gotta start doing some things here and figure out a way to like really bump up my level of doing things. Because just like I, you know, I'm not rock climbing anymore. I'm not going. I haven't been in a restaurant ever. The first time I've ever been like eating inside of a restaurant at, since the pandemic started was January first at Jesse and I's fourth annual ikea lunch new year's day ikea lunch yes we've discovered this new tradition where every new year's day we go to ikea for lunch and shop around because why not ikea is the best and i here okay here's some ikea tips for you at home number one this is the biggest tip i can ever give anybody number one ikea tip from ryan knightsey if you're gonna go to ikea eat lunch in the cafeteria first and then shop. It sounds obvious, but if you don't do it, you're going to end up fighting about paper, not paper towels, but end up fighting about what towel looks best in your bathroom. Don't do it. You're all going to be hangry. Just eat first. Hangry is never a good thing. No, and you, and if, you, if you're going to be... before what you're going to do. Exactly, exactly. Do that. that, that that's a pro, like, date, date tip. It's like, eat first. And then do and then do other things, uh, or or uh, eat first and then go to the grocery store. Always in general, just make sure you're eating first. Don't go out. Never go out anywhere hungry. Yes. Yes. Or else, all you're gonna do is think about when is it time to leave so I can go eat. I will backtrack on that date idea because, uh... <laughs> No, I don't want to talk about that. Let's move on to the show. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> moving on. Uh, speaking of moving on, let's move on to the first uh, card of the day for Monday Night Raw, Mikey. Uh, yeah, we got Raw good. and SmackDown here. Uh, every single week, you guys at home can vote on whose card you think is better. Is it my version of Raw, Mikey version of SmackDown? We've been booking our own versions of Raw and SmackDown for you know, t- over two years now. Almost the, when the summer comes around, three years. So uh you can all you know you can see that archive back on our website or of course you can uh just listen along. It's like diving into WWE. Just listen along, you can leave, you can come back. Things will be different. So you might have to like reinstate what has happened, but the archive, the wikis are guess are technically there. So you can always come back in. But weekly listeners, come on, let's we gotta drive those listeners. We're we're gonna our listenership is going up as Monday Night Raw is going down, and I have to think they're correlated. Uh, anyways, besides that, let's go into Monday Night Raw. Uh, we're gonna open up the show, Mikey, here, uh, with Drew McIntyre. If you remember last week, him looking for Roman Reigns and getting Samoan dropped through a car in the parking lot. So, yes. McIntyre's a little bruised, a little battered, but he's here, standing. <laughs> McIntyre's hurting a little bit. <laughs> he's, he's a little hurt. Uh, and here he is, standing in a parking lot, again. Oh no, he's asking for it. To open up the show. Charlie Cruz asking for another car Samoan drop. Charlie Carusa comes over and tries to ask a question to McIntyre. But McIntyre just says that if she wants some answers, she's gonna have to wait. Uh then then we see a limo show up in the parking lot. Uh McIntyre runs over in a very similar spot to last week. Uh, but this instead, this time, instead of like pulling anyone out of the car. McIntyre just straight up jumps into the car, jumps into the limo. Um, from inside the limo, McIntyre closes the door, looks up to see Paul Heyman. Hmm. 
Heyman tells McIntyre, uh, like I told you, Drew, Roman's night not here. Uh, then we hear a screech of tires, and from an exterior shot uh, from a, from outside the limo, we see a Brinks truck come driving over and slamming into the side back door of the limo. Just, just, Paul just Heyman was in it. there. Just ramming it, crushing it. Uh, dozens of people rush over, and we see Roman Reigns get out of the Brinks truck. Uh, real Mr. Moneybags over there. Uh... <laughs> Uh, ambulance and police are able to get the door off the limo to get in and they pull out McIntyre and Heyman uh, Heyman has just a couple light scratches you know this is a limo so hitting the back of the limo is it, it's you know oh, it's was not Heyman, like sitting all the way in the front exactly right <laughs> so so hey, Heyman gets some light scratches because he is like thrown a little bit but uh still a bold move of Heyman to, to put him to put himself on the line like that exactly right so Heyman comes out some light scratches a little bit a little bit of pain mcintyre is just comes out and he's blooded bloodied um you know scratches and cuts and he's not looking good mcintyre gets put into an ambulance and Heyman just runs away from the scene of the crime with roman reigns roman's like listen mcintyre i don't want to fight you so instead i'm gonna murder you exactly right <laughs> exactly right um maybe we'll hear more from them later uh but speaking of Next up, we have a tag match, and it's going to be two jobbers taking on the team of Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. Um, I guess you can probably imagine where this is headed. Uh, mm-hmm. Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke get the win here. Oh, you're telling me the jobbers didn't pull out an upset victory? No, they did not. Uh, Unbelievable. After the match, Rose and Brooke grab the microphones. Uh, Mandy Rose says that last week their locker room was trashed, uh, and after putting some pieces together, we believe it was the woman, the women we built the women we beat two weeks ago who had done it. Dana Brooks says that next week we are laying down the challenge not only for revenge from, for comeuppance, but for the women's tag team championships. That's right. Nia Jackson, Tamina, we are coming for you. Nice. I like the challenge being laid down. Challenge being laid down next week. Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke taking on Nia Jackson, Tamina for the women's tag team championships. All right. All right. I like it. I like it. Yeah. And let's stay in the women's division, Mikey, with uh, a change your luck match. Do you remember the uh, fifteen person battle royal? La- well, not fifteen person, but the uh, change your luck number battle 15, royal. The la- number fifteen battle royal. Yes, last week that Peyton Royce won. Uh, Peyton Royce is basically defending that spot number in the Royal Rumble. Uh, if she wins, she moves up two spots from number fifteen uh, to seventeen. If she loses, she goes from fifteen to thirteen. Uh, and she has to basically try to earn more spots, get more spots as as you go. So this is that change your luck match. Peyton Royce taking on Bailey. Um, All right. Again, if Royce wins, she gets two spot. She goes up two spots from fifteen to seventeen. She loses, she goes down. Uh, and the winner of this match is going to be Peyton Royce. So good big on win for Peyton. Big win for Peyton. Uh, Bailey just sort of haven't seen her forever. She comes out and then she loses. So Bailey, nothing really happening with Bailey right now. Which sucks, but hopefully maybe things will change. But I needed someone to lose to Peyton Royce. And I was just like, ah, there's a kid this Larray. I don't know. Bailey's not doing anything. So I just did Peyton, <laughs> did Bailey. So that sucks. And I'm not happy about that. But Peyton Royce gets the win. That means she is now number 17 in the Women's Royal Rumble. All right. All right. Move it up a little bit. Will she climb even higher? We'll find out. Um, next up, we get a video profile package on Keith Lee and Dijakovic's friendship in NXT and the Indies. Keith Lee talks about Dijakovic turning on him and their eventual title match at the Royal Rumble. I like it. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy on that one. Yeah, just a simple build. We haven't seen Keith Lee in a while. Dijakovic won two weeks ago in a, in, in a cheap way. <laughs> so, so, you know, we got to build to it a little bit. Um, <clears throat> moving right along, we got uh, Randy Orton. Last week he defeated Cedric Alexander. This week he's taking on Mustafa Ali, Alexander's tag team partner. Okay. Uh, and the winner, of course, is going to be Randy Orton. Okay. Yep. Not too surprised. Sounds, sounds sounds correct. Uh, after the match, Randy Orton gets in the microphone and says, "Well, well, well. Looks like I've beaten both of you in singles matches." Now I'll just cut to the case, Chase. Um, let me guess, you you all want your revenge, and 
one final match, make it a tag match, okay? I've already agreed, I say yes. Which means I'm going to need a partner. Edge, I'll see you next week, buddy. Proclaiming proclaiming that Edge is going to be his partner. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ed, being a little bitter, I guess, for the past couple of weeks, and so now he's, like, bringing in Edge as a partner. <laughs> He just wants to be. He just wants to be good buds, not, good pals. Not bringing in Edge as his partner, demanding Edge as his partner. Mm-hmm. A, a clear distinction, Mikey. A clear distinction there. That is correct. We'll see how uh, Edge uh, handles this or takes that. Yeah, that's true. So that at least sets up Alex, Ali, Ali, and Alexander next week taking on Randy Orton and Edge, presumably. <laughs> Edge, maybe. We'll see. Uh, next up, we got a backstage interview with uh, neck brace wearing Paul Heyman. Uh, yeah, yikes! Well, he's in a car accident. He's got up with a neck brace on. Um, car, car accident or car purpose? <laughs> fair question. Uh, Charlie asked Heyman about what happened earlier today. Because what the hell else is she gonna ask him? Um, yeah. he- Heyman said. Uh, Heyman asked if Charlie has ever seen Tom and Jerry. Uh, Charlie. What? Charlie says yes. Uh, Heyman says that uh, she must re- she must remember what happens in the show every single week. You see, the cat is constantly trying to catch the mouse, but whatever he tries, it never seems to work. He gets hurt, injured, sent to the hospital, while the mouse is able to continue with his life, getting rid of his menace. Uh, without the menace even realizing it. You see, Charlie, McIntyre's pursuit of Roman Reigns is deadly to him, and he doesn't even realize it. I hope he learned that today. I love that he's comparing Roman Reigns trying to murder someone to Tom and Jerry. Well, no, he's saying he's saying that McIntyre is coming after Roman. Roman's def- he's saying that Roman's defending himself. So, so in this scenario, Roman is Jerry. He is the, Roman is the mouse in this scenario. Jerry, correct. I don't know. <laughs> what do I? What do, I've never seen Tom and Jerry. Charlie has. What? <laughs> Of course I've seen Tom really? and Jerry. No, of course yeah, I've seen Tom and Jerry. I would say Tom and Jerry's great. I used to, I used to watch it when I was a kid. I don't remember the ma- I don't remember their names. <laughs> I don't remember their names. Yeah, well, Tom is a cat because he's a tomcat. That makes sense. But yes, he's saying Rome Paul Heyman is saying that McIntyre is the cat, otherwise known as Drew Meowcatire. Uh and they got Ro- <laughs> <laughs> they got Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is the as the mouse here who has been is defending himself and it's that's the situation that's happening right in front of us. All right. I I, I guess it's a fair comparison. <laughs> it's not out of the Roadrunner. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know. I, like, I feel like that I, that also would have been good. Yeah, but I like, like I like, because I feel like, like the, the Road... McIntyre being the Wiley Coyote to the... It makes sense. But Both the, of them, I guess. The road, I feel like the Roadrunner is doing like nothing while like Jerry does some stuff. You know, Jerry's more active in his defense of his life than the Roadrunner is, I feel like. Jerry's more active in the defense of his life. <laughs> exactly. Well, the Roadrunner is just there. Just runs and it's usually fine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, the Roadrunner is just passive. He's just living his life, doing his thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Interesting. Uh, that's why, that's why we want to tell Jerry. The, the, the two cartoons. <laughs> the two old, old school cartoons, Tom and Jerry and Roadrunner. Yes. I was more of a Rocky and Bullwinkle kind of guy, and that doesn't fit here. <laughs> That's what I never really watched. <laughs> I love. I've seen like every episode of Rocky and Bullwinkle. <laughs> you know what was a good? You know what was a good classic cartoon? Wacky Racers. Never seen it. Really? It's just a bunch of like classic cartoon characters, but they're all just like racing in a, in a race. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, but it's like very Mario Kart esque. Like, make that makes sense. They, they, the wacky shenanigans happen to, and it it was it was funny. I, I surely that was a video game. It probably probably has to be um moving right along uh we got a tag match simple tag match here ziggler and rude taking on the team of bronson reed and arturo ruas uh reed and ruas pick up the win on a little bit of streak here mm-hmm. all right i like it uh next up is our main event of the evening the number one contenders match for the united states championship chad gable of course his coach and mentor Dan- uh, not not coach his mentor daniel bryan in his corner Taking on Alistair Black. Okay. Remember last week, uh, Brian says that uh, that Gable is going after the U.S. title, but needs to defeat Alistair Black to do so, as he was told. So here we go, number one contenders match between the two. 
Uh, Mikey, who's your pick? Hmm. I don't know. That's fair. Do you want you want you want the answer? Yes. The answer is Alistair Black gets the win. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed? Not, not not you. Me. Not, not me. Apparently, <laughs> literally, literally not you. <laughs> Uh, Alistair Black I I might be surprised. Alistair Black gets the win, becomes the number new number one contender. Uh, another loss for Chad Gable here. Uh, so su- <laughs> sucks to suck Gable, I guess. Uh, I thought I might be surprised. Okay. What did you think it was going to be Gable? I thought Gable could have could have won here. I don't think it was like an obvious choice. No, I was like, I want the chair on the guess. Gable, I think was Gable was my original pick, but I but things had to change, and I was like, ah. When I was thinking, when I sat on it, I was like, it's got to be Alistair Black, uh, and I can explain more why because after the match, okay, let's go. Uh, Black does his usual gimmick that he's been doing for a little bit. You know, he won with the Black Mass, but after the matches that he's been having with Ziggler or uh, Tony Nice. He uh, goes for the Black Mass once again, but uh, One Nation runs out from the crowd. Oh, no. Cruz and Tozawa take out Brian and Gable, and Ciampa deals with Aleister Black. Uh, When they're all laid out, Ciampa grabs the microphone and says that people seem to think that we're only focused on one thing, and that's the tag team division, but they are gravely mistaken. My United States Championship was robbed. And we will ensure that I get my championship back under my waist. We will control the United States Championship. We will control the tag team division. Uh, Ciampa grabs Black's arm and sets up the break. Cruz, Ciampa, and Tazawa all do the One Nation salute. The double, double fist to the chest, one finger up. Ciampa says, we are One Nation. And crack, Ciampa breaks the number one contender's arm, Aleister Black. And that this is, is it. Is anyone ever going to learn how to reverse this hold? Uh, no. Or get out of it at all? No. Have you ever seen I Lucha? I feel like people can see this coming by now. Well, they didn't see it coming here. No, no one suspected One Nation here. That's fair. That's not the tag team division like, where they've been going after recently. So it makes sense, I guess, that no one really saw them coming. Yes. But that is it. That is it for this week's episode of people Monday Night Raw. Nope. Uh, thoughts, Mikey. Thoughts on Monday Night Raw here. A lot of people stuff on- happening. A lot of stuff happening. People on Raw need to start drinking their milk. <laughs> <laughs> Make those bones stronger. God, if only with one with one nation running around. If only they had proper health care. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! That's really what Champa's doing. Is he wants to get health care? Part of one nation. He's just bankrupting everybody <laughs> with hospital bills. Yeah. <laughs> Uh yeah, a lot of a lot of big moves here. Uh, One Nation breaking more people's arms, taking more people out of the Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. Uh, Roman Roman Reigns literally attempting murder on Drew McIntyre. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a great Raw. Dana Brooke, Dana Brooke and Mandy Rose challenge get, getting their challenge out there because they did beat the champions. Mm-hmm. Very 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 good Raw. I think very solid. Everything everything's coming together for. Uh, Royal Rumble. Yes, I have all my pieces. I feel like are starting to come together. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I've been, I like, I feel like after the draft, I'm always like, okay, I got to start putting things together. But it takes me a while for the things to come together. You know, it yeah. it takes me a while to get like, okay, things are things are falling into place. And I feel like I'm now starting to get to the point where like, okay, things are starting to fall in place. The pieces are getting moved properly. Uh, and the ground is underneath my feet on all those metaphors and whatnot. I feel like I've I I feel like I have a good course right now, and I'm excited about what's ahead of me. But uh, sucks to suck for some people like Alistair Black, who's just uh, won the normal contendership, and now he's a uh, broken arm. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I guess we will. Okay, well let's uh, move on to SmackDown then. Yeah. All right. Over on Friday night, we have Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy opening up the show. Ooh, the boys. Yeah. Is this is That's this right. his return or did he return last week? I don't quite know. He remember. returned he returned last week when he uh he stopped the Mastiff Murphy main event. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So You're Seth right. Rollins Seth Rollins and Buddy Murphy open up the show. Rollins grabs a mic and says, WWE Universe, the savior of SmackDown has made his triumphant return. 
Now hold, that on, I'm back. hold on, can I do a quick edit? Yes. He has risen. Right. Well, I, I wanted to say he came... Uh, yeah, okay, okay, Risen makes sense. WWE Universe, the savior of SmackDown, has risen again. Like a loaf of bread, I have risen. <laughs> like, a, like a beautiful loaf of sourdough, I have risen. Now that I have, ret- now that I have returned, I plan on making some changes around here. First and foremost, my loyal, my loyal follower and I have plans to make the traitor pay for what he did. After all I did for... He pauses and looks a little bit like he has like a look of like disdain on his face and like disgust. Mm-hmm. He goes, Dave Mastiff. He still had the gall to turn his back on me. The only person who had ever believed in him. I gave him a shot at greatness and he spit it right back in my face. Oh my Since God. he doesn't appreciate the help and support I once gave him, he must be punished. And I plan on doing that tonight. Mastiff, I challenge you to a match. You and me. I'll show you what it means to spit in the face of a god. <laughs> Rollins leaves with Murphy and Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, dude. I'll show you what it means to spit in the face of a god. Jesus Christ. Seth Rollins. Going from Jesus Christ to God. <laughs> Just taking that step up. Yeah, well, that, that's the natural. It's a natural step. I mean, I mean that ladder. It's a natural step. Why be a why be a messiah when you could be a god? Exactly. Why be the son of a why why be the son of a god? Just it's assume godlike status. I I, I agree. I agree with some problems here. <laughs> All right. After that, we have Morrison and Andrade taking on the Mysterios. Hey, my first time, I believe. Yeah. Uh, for, the first time uh they're t- tag teaming together, but Morrison and Andrade do end up getting the victory. Because they are the more experienced team at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. After the match, Morrison grabs a mic and he says, "Enough with this." Andrade and I have proved time, time and time again that we are one of the most dominant tag teams in this division, and we have shown everyone that we deserve the SmackDown Tag Championship. Last time we had an opportunity, the Usos came in and stole it from under our noses. And if it means we have to beat down every damn team in this division, so be it. Morrison slams the mic down, and they leave angrily as one does as one usually does nice nice i like that i like this short little feud with mysterios but just not mysterios never really getting anything out of it they just constantly lose sucks for them it was more more to build more so than andrade honestly that no that i was just about to say like it's more so that you're you're building a more so andrade here uh, and they're sick of it. They're, I, they, I would be upset. The Usos come out of nowhere and get a shot at the titles that they were number one contenders for. It's like, yeah, I'd be upset. Yeah. After that, we have a uh, a segment where Sheamus is called into GM Page's office to get his number for the Royal Rumble. Page says, Sheamus, thanks for coming. You're the first one to officially pull their number here on SmackDown. And I think, and it's honestly, it's feeling pretty lucky. Seamus reaches his hand in the bingo cage and pulls out his number. He grins and says, guess the luck is on my side. And he leaves. Ooh. I was going to make a luck of the Irish joke, but then I decided not to. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, can't, you, you snuck it in there. I snuck it in there. I didn't want to make it as obvious. Yes, 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 yes. I didn't want, I didn't want Seamus to be like, oh, luck of the Irish then. <laughs> uh, okay, well, there we go. Uh, Seamus is officially in the Royal Rumble. Um and presumably he has a good number, pretty solid number, yeah. I'd say probably a a, a latter half number. Mm-hmm. So good for good for Sheamus there. I'm gonna just write note that uh Sheamus is in the Rumble, uh good number. It's a high number, yes. After that, we have a uh, match number two. We have Samoa Joe taking on Jeff Hardy with Kevin Owens on commentary. Ooh. During the during the match, Joe locks Hardy in the coquina clutch and stares right at Owens as Jeff Hardy taps. But uh, Joe does not release the hold, and he stares at Owens the entire time. Oh my He's God. Ha- he has Jeff Hardy locked in. Uh, Owens runs to the ring, and Joe releases the hold, and the two start to throw hands at each other in the ring until referees and security separate the two and walk Joe to the back. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Joe's yeah. furious. Yeah. If you couldn't tell. No, yeah. Uh he's a he's a little upset 
uh, for fair reason, I guess. <laughs> he's a he's a little mad. He's a little he's a little cranky. <laughs> it's just a little bit pissed off. Yeah, no, I, I I and I guess I guess that's fair. <laughs> yeah. After after that match, uh, the Firefly Funhouse music hits. Ooh. Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt jumps into frame and says excitedly, Hello, my Fireflies. Today is a very special episode of the Firefly Funhouse because we're going through some letters that you, Firefly, sent me. He grabs a bag from off screen that is overflowing with letters and says, that says Firefly Post Office on it. He, <laughs> he sits down in a big chair and opens the first letter. He says, well, this one is from James in Orlando, Florida, who says, Mr. Wyatt, <laughs> who says, Mr. Wyatt, where is Sami Zayn? I know he's been mean, but I haven't seen him in a while, and I'm starting to get a little bit worried. Wyatt looks a little bit disappointed with that first letter, but he responds anyway with his old chipper self. He says, well, James, Mr. Zayn is in timeout right now. Once he learns his lesson, he'll be right back to entertaining you all on SmackDown. Don't you worry. Let's open another one. <laughs> <laughs> I like this already. He grabs another letter out of the bag. This one is from Aaliyah over in Kansas City. Hi, Bray. I love the Firefly Funhouse, and I'm a big fan. But I'm scared of what happened to Sammy. He stops reading, and his face drops again, and he says, We already answered this one. Let's try another. He pulls out another letter, and another letter. They're all asking about Sammy Zayn. Bray Wyatt looks upset that the questions weren't to his liking, but he keeps a chipper facade anyway and says, Yowie, wowie, Fireflies. A lot of you are asking about what happened to Sammy Zayn. And like I said, Right now, he's in timeout. And until he learns his lesson, that's where he's going to stay. To help him learn his lesson, I've sent a very close friend of mine to teach him the meaning of this respect word he likes to throw around so much. No. As he says this, his face and tone get progressively darker. Of course. He snaps back to his chipper self and says, Well, that looks like all the time we have on this Firefly Funhouse. See you all again soon. Bye bye that was great <laughs> that was great i liked it a lot i liked it a lot uh <laughs> just good it's just good you know it's just good i don't have any i don't really have any comments it's just like i really like that a lot i feel like you're really nailing this sort of i feel like you are nailing the sort of fiend bray wyatt thing here uh i just like it a lot there's no, nothing more i can really comment about that thank you i appreciate it it's really it's really hard to like it's really hard trying to get Bray Wyatt, so it's good to hear that I've been doing an okay job at it. Yeah, we talked about this last week, where it's just like, it is a distinctive tone. But I think that also makes it... It's hard to write for a specific tone, but I think it's more fun. Yeah. I don't know if you... like it. That sort of thing of like... You know, if you're just writing like a promo about like, oh, I'm going to fight you. It's like, okay, we're sort of setting it up. But having like this distinctive tone, like I try to do a tone with Keith Lee. Um, it's, it's not, and it's tougher because it's just a normal person. But I try to do like, I try to think of like if Keith Lee is saying these words, how is he saying them? Um, that sort of thing. Or Paul Heyman, I do a sort of kind of do like a tone. The Fiend is just more an easier understanding of what that tone is because it is very distinct. Um, but it's just this sort of thing. And you want to do the same thing with like Samoa Joe a little bit, where Samoa Joe has a little bit of a tone. Samoa Joe for me is just very intense. Yes. Yeah, but that's it. You like having those character traits like come in and be like, oh, this guy's intense. This we'll do this. I think it just works. I like it a lot. Thank you. After that Firefly Funhouse segment, we have match number three. We have Styles and Balor taking on Fish and O'Reilly, the former tag team champion. Oh my god. What a and match, Styles. by the way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Styles and Balor end up getting the victory here. Whoa! Winning over the former tag team champions, Undisputed Era, Fish and O'Reilly. Wow. Yeah, big win for them. Big old win for Styles and Balor. Really? Styles and Balor becoming a big old tag team here. They're, yeah. <laughs> they're cementing really themselves. Strange to get their uh their groove together starting to find their their team chemistry yeah styles got his groove back indeed uh and also and finn Balor's there as well um yeah that's the, that's the name of his autobiography how styles got his groove back exactly right um 
Yeah, no, that's a big win for Styles and Balor, beating f- old school tag team champions. Mm-hmm. Um, big old win there. And I like to imagine Balor, Balor, Fish, and O'Reilly is just a solid matchup, and then throwing Styles there because you know, you know, in, in New Japan, they in the tag team division, Fish and O'Reilly and Balor and Taguchi had a lot of matches, mm-hmm. but throwing Styles on top of that just more greatness. I feel like and. I, th- God, I'm excited. But where where do they go? Where do we go here? With the match full of workhorses is what this is. Exactly, Rice. Exactly, Rice. All right, I'm excited. I'm excited for it. Yeah. After after that, we have a backstage interview with Dave Mastiff about the challenge Rollins issued earlier in the night. Mastiff is silent for a while, but then just says, "I accept," and walks off camera to prepare for his match. Focus. Focus. The epitome of focus. Oh yeah, he's he's he. I think he's ready for this one. I would be. I I would have. You would hope he he has to be. You know, he has to be focused. Mm-hmm. After that, we have match number four. We have Piper Niven taking on Charlotte Flair. Ooh. During the match, Natalia tries to distract the referee, and Tony Storm jumps on the apron and takes her down. Then Charlotte takes out Tony Storm, which lets Piper Niven hit her finisher and win the match. Big old win from Piper Niven. Big win for Piper Niven over Charlotte Flair. Yeah, good job, Piper, getting a big old win over over Charlotte Flair here. You love to see it, folks. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tony Storm helping her out um, as well. <laughs> Tony Storm not getting the win last week against Natalia, but they were able yeah. to learn uh, and improve and, and change that, so Piper Niven gets the win over Charlotte Flair. Good on that. Good booking. Good, good win. Yeah, after that, we have a backstage interview with Storm and Niven after the match about what they think of Natalia and Charlotte as a team. Niven speaks up and says, I think I can speak for the both of us when I say that we had the utmost respect for Charlotte and Natalia, two of the most dangerous competitors in the women's division, even just in the WWE in general. But they came after us. They did what they did. And now, after oh, sorry, they came after us. After they did what they did, all we have for them now is disdain. If they want a piece of us, they they could have just asked. But since they won't, I will. Charlotte, Natalia, we challenge you to a match next week to settle this. See you both in the ring. Nice. Nice. So next week, we have, official ta- we have a tag team match official, Tony Storm and Piper Niven taking on Charlotte Flair and Natalia. A very interesting. Very interesting. Because also, you know, a win here could maybe win uh maybe earn some sort of women's tag team title match some sort of you know something down the line you know mm-hmm. a big i don't think i think storm and niven have tag team together already right storm and niven have been tag teaming together for a bit now um i think their first i think their only match was against bliss and cross i believe that i can see here um, uh, they had a match again. Uh, bl- yeah, you're right. Bliss and Cross. I thought I put them in much more matches. I guess not. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Charlotte. It doesn't matter because Charlotte Flair and Natalia haven't had a, sing- a tag match at all yet. So whoever wins this match, really defining moment uh, in the tag team division here. You might have had more matches in the before draft, but I don't remember when we drafted. When did we- I think we drafted Tony Storm in the draft, but don't quite remember. The the first match the, the first time I thought about putting them in a team together was the cup the return home show from Survivor Series. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah, think of like uh, I'm trying to think of like when the I, I guess that was the interesting. I, I didn't I I thought I feel like I put them in much more, but I guess not. <laughs> no, it's just there because he did a little bit of uh I think that we did we it was that and then we just didn't see them for a bit. But no matter, no matter. It still doesn't matter because, uh, like I said, Flair and Natalia have never teamed as a tag team that I remember. Yes. Uh, the only time they were together was last week when uh, Charlotte helped Natalia get the win. Yeah. So, you know, minimum experience, but uh, a defining moment in a tag team's history. they are able to get a win over another team. So good on them. Good on them. After after that interview, we have our main event. We have Dave Mastiff taking on Seth Rollins with Murphy in his corner. My big bomber, Dave. Yeah, he just my man. Two main events in a row. Yes. Uh, during the 
During the match, Murphy distracts the referee as Mastiff is going for his finisher, which lets Rollins sneak out of the finisher and hit a low blow. He then hits the stomp on Mastiff and wins the match. Rollins and Murphy stand tall over Mastiff yet again. I don't like that. <laughs> no, my boy, my big boy bomber, Dave Mastiff, getting the low blow. Well, it's a cheap win. It's a cheap win from Seth Rollins, which yeah. booking-wise means that we're going to see another proper match down the line. Yeah, I think what I'm going for is that that whole like numbers advantage thing. Yes. With uh, Rollins having Murphy and Dave being basically alone right now. Yes, yeah, so the, so that makes it either some an edge has to be given to Dave to be able to out outlast the numbers advantage, or someone has to help Dave um, to take down Rollins and Murphy. Um, but also, the low blow makes me think no no DQ matches in someone's future, or a steel cage match maybe as well. Um, maybe. But uh, we have time before whether or not it happens to the Royal Rumble or not. Uh, we have two more shows before that, so I'm excited. Um, those, I guess that's my, that's my comment about the card. I thought it was a solid show. Same sort of thing. I think it was a solid show. Big middle-of-the-show tag match there. Love to see it. Piper Nevin getting a huge win over Star- Charlotte Flair. Uh, Morrison Andrade saying you know, they want the tag team titles uh, and wanting to eventually go after the Usos, which good on them. Samoa Joe being a scary monster. And just a solid Firefly Funhouse. Um, that I really enjoyed. So yeah, good job, Mikey. I really liked it. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, you don't appreciate it. It's <laughs> just like, oh, no. Okay. And I don't appreciate it. Good. Fine. <laughs> I Yeah, I really like the direction Spike that went this week. Uh, I know I need to do more Royal Rumble builds since Seamus is the first one to pick his number and we only have two weeks left. <laughs> yes. Yes, so uh, far, so far in the Royal Rumble... Announced, we have Reigns, MVP, Cesaro, Lashley, and Sheamus. And then the women's, we have, num- for, at number 17, Peyton Royce. Which is not a lot on either side when you really think about it. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I do, I, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a thing. It's a thing. But it's fine. We have plenty of time. We got two more episodes of show to get more people in there. And it's fine. Surprise entries happen all the time. Uh, I've been, I've been purposely taking people out. That way, we get more NXT roster members on the Royal Rumble. So you're welcome, NXT, for the bumps, for the pay, more, the paycheck bumps. More surprises, hooray! Yes, so you're welcome, I guess. Um, but I'm sure we got plenty of people to team it up, and we'll figure out how we'll do the Royal Rumble there. But we still got other stuff. I mean, the other Royal Rumble things we have planned so far are, um. Keith Lee versus Dijakovic for the WWE Championship. At some point, uh, I think that's actually it that we have announced. I think you have announced the Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. I, think, I believe this has already been announced. Samoa Joe and Kevin Owens. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, Kevin Owens versus Sami Sammy, Zayn. Sami Zayn is still in timeout. <laughs> yes. we. I have to imagine it's going to be The Fiend versus Sami Zayn at the Royal Rumble. And Ricochet probably will be doing if something. If Sammy ever comes back. Yes. Ricochet will probably be doing something with the U.S. title, potentially, but just a matter of who is going to be the challenger. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we got a bunch of other matches that have yet been announced. Um, but we'll see when we get there, folks. But uh, uh, before we get there, of course, we, uh, we are a show that tries to stay, as, stay, stay in the realm of realism as much as possible. Um, that's you know more feasible for us to do the show. Uh, so every single week we have you, the fans, vote at home, the listeners at home, to vote on which show you thought was better. You can go to our Twitter at CountOutPod. That is at CountOutPod on Twitter. Uh, and there, every single weekend, we have a poll where you can vote and say which show did you like more. Was it Raw? Was it SmackDown? Uh, and the results are in, Mikey. Let's get to it. Yeah, let's do it. And the winner is Monday Night Raw gets the victory. I've won, baby. I'm the big old wiener. All right, Ryan, getting a victory. I'm I'm happy for you, but I'm also sad for me. You better be. Uh, you better be happy for me because I'm gonna destroy SmackDown Live. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a bulldozer and bulldozer over that those blue ropes. Uh, and I'm oh, gonna oh no, I'm gonna send in Roman Reigns of the Brink truck and take you down. Oh no, I, I don't. I, no, please don't. You can't tell me what to do, uh, but except I that do. I won the poll. <laughs> except I can tell you what to do. Exactly right, because I'm the winner of the poll, and I'll hit you with the randomizer. 
to see yeah. what happens to you, with you, sir. If that is your nickname, it's not. But I don't care. Um, okay, so the poll, uh, the randomizer has been hit. Um, let's see what we get. Um, it is going to be interesting. Mikey, you have a controversy. Uh, controversy? Yes. Vince wants you to book a controversial moment. A controversial moment. Interesting. Correct, Amundo. Something that's going to make the internet ablaze. Oh, those are always the hardest ones, right? They are... I, I, I'm i never happy about it because it's always like, oh, man. <laughs> what what will make the internet potentially upset but will drive viewers, maybe? Oh, I don't know. What can I change in this card that can be possibly controversial? Do you want to have Roman Reigns run someone over in a Brinks truck? <laughs> I'm about to say, you, you baked yours in. Yeah, haha. I've done it. I have controversy. I also ended with uh, Tommaso Ciampa breaking the normal get to his arm. That's a little bit of a controversy. It's a tough one. It's always a tough one. What about what about? Yeah, it's like what what can Rollins do that will make the internet upset with him? <laughs> he can he can tweet. I guess is the answer. <laughs> He could do literally anything on Twitter. Yeah. Um. Hmm. What about like? What about like after the the match where he after he beats Mastiff? Instead of just like leaving it at that, he. I'm thinking he maybe like a Mastiff beatdown, but I don't know if that's controversial enough. A massive beatdown or a Mastiff beatdown? A massive beatdown to Mastiff. Ooh. A, a massive Mastiff beatdown. Oh. Oh Jesus! <laughs> oh Jesus! Um, something like like he he throws him around, you know, like throws him into the barrier. Maybe like puts the chair. Maybe okay. Maybe he does the the thing where he puts the chair on his neck and jumps from the top rope. Oh Jesus! And stop and like crushes it. Well, that's not bad. I like that. Does he have? Mur- like does, he have does he do it as Murphy do it? Here's what I'm thinking. Hit me. Murphy, Seth is getting on the top rope, and Seth orders Murphy to set it up. Mm-hmm. Murphy is a little, Murphy's like a little hesitant about it at first, but then he eventually does it. Of but then at, but then right before Seth jumps, Murphy looks away. Interesting. Maybe feeling a little remorseful. Interesting. Interesting. But the deed is done nonetheless. But the deed is done nonetheless, yes. Okay, I like that. I like that. It's a little controversial. We're going to injure or take purposely injure someone. Really, you know, a more, you know, Rollins came back last week, but this is sort of a more proper villainous introduction to Rollins. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's nice really taking out and really sacrificing his apostle, disciple. Yes. Um, I think it's good. I like it. I think this is good. I think it was, I think it's controversial enough. Thank you. Okay, that's good. Got there. Yes, exactly right. So that is it. The randomizers have been done. The shows have been booked. We are done for this episode. So thank you, everybody, for listening to this week's episode of Hit the Books. Mikey, what do you think? I thought it was a good episode. I thought we had a good episode. I thought SmackDown and Raw were both good, and I can't wait to see who uh, comes out on top next week in, in the polls. Yeah, I know. I, ho- I think I, I hope I think we had some good shows. I think we presented good shows for you folks at home. So if you want to vote in those polls, again, head on over to at CountoutPod on Twitter. That's at CountoutPod on Twitter, uh, and there every single weekend you can go vote. So this weekend, go to go to at CountoutPod. Vote on whose card who whose card from this episode did you think was better? Was it Raw? Was it SmackDown? Um, who'd you like? Who'd you not like? I guess not liking would be the one you don't vote for. Um, but you can go vote there. I'll be there all weekend. It'll be the pinned tweet um, on our Twitter page. So you can just go at CountoutPod to go vote in there. Um, you can also follow the rest of the network. We have a bunch of different shows. We have uh, hit the books, like we said. We also have G1 and Only and Indie Waters. Mikey, you want to talk about Indie Waters? Yeah, in, uh, Independent Waters is uh, me and Zach Batista show every Wednesday where we go in depth on the independent wrestling scene. We find matches, we give them ratings for you, uh, so you can check them out if you want or don't. It's up to you. You know, we just we just we just try to steer you and steer you in the right direction. You know, 
So go check that out every Wednesday here on the Countout Network. Uh, I think you're going to like it. And, of course, you can go check out um, the latest episode of G1 and Only. The latest episode was an episode about Ric Flair and his uh, three matches that he had in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, it wasn't his only matches he ever had in New Japan Pro Wrestling, but it's the only three he had in the G1 Climax. Um, and he does very well for himself, so go check out that episode. Um, I have all new episode this Monday as well. Um, so go, you know, go subscribe to all those shows. Um, but we also have new things. We also have articles starting to come out. So you can also go to our website, count out. Oh, what is our website? <laughs> count, it's count just count a pod, right? Count dot com. You can go over the head over there to go check out, uh, and see some articles that we have written, have friends of the show, uh, written as well. We'll talk more about those as we get along. Um, uh, again, we are an alternate timeline, but this is way early before any of those may come out. So, so realistically, we don't know what's out, uh, by the time you're hearing this, but, uh, go check out count upon. Maybe the articles, there's some articles up already. Um, maybe I should be advertising your year end awards at this point in time, but, uh, you know, maybe I'm not, <laughs> maybe there'll be a bumper that we'll put in post later. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, but anyways, yeah. So go, go to countoutpod.com, go to at countoutpod on Twitter. Uh, go there. You can also subscribe to this show and all of our shows. Like we said, and if you can go to iTunes, go to Apple podcasts and leave a review for hit the books, uh, five star review. We would greatly appreciate it. Uh, and I think that's it. Uh, go to our YouTube channel, uh, hit the count out podcast, uh, on YouTube. You get uh, YouTube versions of the show, just like you. So if you don't want to listen to on Apple podcasts or Spotify, whatever, you can just go to YouTube and listen to it as well. We got the bonus stuff in there is up there as well, but uh, uh, all those things and more you can find there. Mikey, I, all kinds of video content over on the YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Mikey, anything else to plug? I think we wrapped it all up there. I think we did. So thank you everybody for listening to this week's episode. Uh, I just want to say, uh, stay safe, keep staying safe, everybody. Uh, if you get the opportunity, take that vaccine, wear a mask. You know, keep doing those things. That's important. We all want to go back to the collective. We all want- we all want to go all, back to watching have, wrestling live. I'm, I'm still sitting on some AEW Dynamite tickets that were supposed to be last March. You, I, would, I just saw t- on Twitter a graphic for Blood and Guts, the show you were supposed to be at. Um, and still waiting on those. A, a big tear rolls down my face. Yeah. Uh, me, I remember me and Zach were watching, I think it was Revolution when they announced Blood and Guts. Yeah, uh, or maybe it's the week after that. I don't know. No, I think they, they, no, because they announced it at at Revolution. Oh yeah, Jack, Jack was over watching it with me, and we were watching it, and then that came up, and we were like, "Blood and guts, what's this?" And new like like a new is that the next is that the next like pay per view or something? Mm-hmm. And they said Newark, New Jersey, and I was like, "Wait, what?" And then it said <laughs> the date we were going, and I was like, and then me and Zach like had a miniature heart attack and freaked out. <laughs> Yes. So please. Because we were like, we're going to that, and then, <laughs> and then everything, and then pandemic. Yeah. So go if you get the chance, take the vaccine, so we can all go back to see live wrestling shows again. Yes. Um, and happy to have a touring shows and whatnot, because that is the only way. That is I, that is the only current way that I know that will get us to <laughs> back to re- reality, back to the real world. Yeah. Uh, so let's get there, folks. Let's do it together. Um. So until then. Uh, we love you all. We'll see you all next week. Um, but until then, we've got two words for you. Book it.